Well, welcome back. I'm joined by Eric Froelich. We're going to watch another match. That was fun. Welcome to the league, Kai. I don't know. I've yeah. been waiting for an opportunity to bust that deck out. It seemed like... We're trying to figure fun. out if Kai's still in the league. <laughs> I you, kind of think you just blew him back to... Uh, <laughs> she's right back to Hamburg. Apparently I should have run that deck earlier. Where was that when I was going 0-3 with Oath combo? That deck's the old away. ancestral bait into misstep, misdirection, force of will to go off on turn one. Yeah, you see... <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, Force of Will blue card wrecks me, but I think I'm supposed to... I think I played it right, right? Yeah, I mean... Well, you saw his hand. He, he's got to obviously hit very well off the Ancestral, but basically a perfect gen. And he did hit Force of Will, but he did not hit blue card. Yep. That was fun. I like that deck. I can see why after those 45 seconds. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the match got... They're going to restart this match, obviously. Uh, but yeah, more magic... Bonus coverage, Bob Maher is kind enough to also offer us a scrim. This will be the last match of the, of the week, though. Sure. <laughs> that was fun. How? So, I didn't get the chance to talk to you about the match with Luis. Is it just his draws were way better than yours? Or did you, did you, how'd you feel about that mirror match? Uh, yeah, like, as he said, I mean, his draws were, of course, tens. Um, my draws... We're fine. I mean, I, I, I already said it when I was talking to Luis a few minutes ago, like, my draws, or I got far less unlucky in this match than I did last week. I mean, I mulliganed oh. eight times last week. Like, Yeah, that's fair. And the end result was, I just am obsessed with this deck. I think it's fantastic. And okay. you know, I told him, like, I've now, I've already purchased all the foils and all the pimped out cards I need to make the deck. Like, I wow. just think, like, it is really good. And, um... Yeah, my draws were decent, and his draws were amazing, but it showed what the deck is capable of doing, which was, I mean, he was able to go off turn one pretty consistently with plenty of backup. Like, I had Force of Will multiple of these times. You know, just having thoughts, he's his Force of Will, has lots of ways to go off turn one and put up a presence that is basically unbeatable. And I think that my draws would have beaten a lot of other draws and a lot of other decks, and, sure, you know, it was an unfortunate pairing that his draws were... <laughs> They were real good. I was I was never winning. Like I was ready to click concede on turn one multiple times. I figured let's <laughs> let's showcase the deck a little bit more because I mean the games were just completely over. But uh, yeah, you know it. Uh, I I wasn't going to mind losing to the mirror match, losing to you know one of my closest friends in the world, and it all comes down to whether you know how how things go next week. I guess against against Steve. And honestly, I think that. Luis is a better vintage player than I am, and so if I had to choose one of us to move on to, you know, carry the torch, if you want to say that, like, against Steve, like, the way that he played their first match in the regular season, I don't know if everyone watching now has already seen it. If not, you should go watch it. Oh, that I thought he match. played phenomenal. I'm not sure how many people would have won that game, or the, the really long one where uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve had, like, seven counters in his hand at some point, and Luis just slogs through it and wins. Like, that kind of patience and that much... Uh, Understanding of the format and understanding of magic just shows why Luis is who he is. And, uh, yeah, I think he's got a great chance next week. And I think, I think it should be an exciting exciting match. It, it's definitely Luis's favorite, I believe, but it, it's certainly close. Uh, Steve's obviously All vintage. Right, well, speaking of exciting well. matches, Bob is just land Mox Mox Time Twister here on turn one. Figuring, hey, I'm just going to be up these two Moxes. Let's reset to seven. Kai's going to fight? I mean, it's almost... I don't think he... I mean, he obviously doesn't know what Bob's playing. He may put Bob on something more combo-y than what actually appears to be in his hand. I mean, I see a Tezzeret, but right. I also see a Force of Will. All right, so, I mean, I, he is playing something somewhat combo-y. He He's wouldn't have time to Yeah. But yeah. Was yeah. He? I don't know. Be interested to see. Kai's decided, yeah, he doesn't want to just be down these two cards. Oh, wow, Bob's going to push Force back. Guy is probably tired of people turn one him right now all of a sudden. I should give props for my deck, by the way. Uh, it is uh, Danny Baderman gave me that deck list. He's the same guy who put the Angle City Vault list together. Sure. So that's uh, now. What are we looking at? What is? Is that an alternate art Fire and Ice? We need we need to start restricting. 
the art <laughs> to use on these cards because this is not fair to commentary. I, I don't know all these promo Come cards. Come on, it's a red blue split card. What else? No, I, I'm assuming that one, but like. Against you, he had a card in his hand that I couldn't tell the casting cost and just saw it was blue, which the least put it out was probably for your game, but I've never seen that before. I mean, funny. At least, like, you know, both of them are playing with bad art voltaic key, which <laughs> is unfortunate, but at least I've seen that enough. Like, some of these promos I just haven't seen, I mean, I'm going to be honest. All right, so Bob, again, has a sort of controlish hand with a Tezzeret and a voltaic key. Kai has... Got a much more explosive draw with this seven. It's not clear this twister is going to work out for Bob. Certainly he's going to get jaced. Yeah. I mean, that is the uh, high variance nature of a draw seven. Oh, yeah. Although, yeah, Bob has the force of will and, Louise, and uh, Kai can't fight this. Yeah, Bob can draw some way. Like, Black Lotus just ends it. What else can he draw right now? I guess, I guess uh, Time Vault just ends it. But not much else. He's got a lot of land, so... Well, I mean, Bob, if Bob resolves Tezzeret, the game's over, right? He goes and gets the Time Vault now. Bob is basically set up... Well, he's still going to be a Mana Short. Of oh, he's a mana short. He is a Mana Short, you're right. And so, if Kai has, has Demonic Tutor in his hand, then he could go get some way to uh, disrupt that. Plus, now he's drawn the Force of Will, so he's actually in fine shape, and Bob's hand is uh, it's looking pretty weak. And Kai can just hard cast Force of Will, and Bob has no other spells, so... Um, you can just demonic tutor, go get ancestral or whatever he wants, and still have force of will out. So let's get the ancestral here. I don't know his list, but uh, it's a, certainly a good card. He could go get Tinker here if he's got a way to win. He's got force of will backup. That, that will do it. So I, I don't know his list, but yeah, that looks like what he's going Tinker. for. Makes sense. So Bob's going to need to well. It turns out if he top decks any mox, he can go for the Tezzeret, but Kai still has the Force of Will back up, so... Force of Will is going to I don't think Bob has any outs. Yeah, no, with Blight facing Blightstill Colossus, I don't know what Bob can draw here. He has lots of good draws, but they're just not going to do it in the face of Force of Will. There's, of course, Blightstill Colossus right on time. Yeah, the only thing Bob can do now is not show him the Tezzeret. Right, the Tezzeret. He's even a little more mystery about what Bob's actually up to. Some chance he just casts Tezzeret and uses it to go get a creature if he has somehow a creature in his deck that can chump block for a turn. Uh, oh, does that... He would have to have what? If he keeps two loyalty for the Time Vault, what creature would it be? That would have to be, like, Metal no, I mean, it, it doesn't... It leaves his Tezzeret in a fairly useless position, but at least it yeah. will give him another turn. I don't know that he has a creature in his deck. I, I can't imagine. I was like, Metal is the only one I can think of, but that's Spell not going to be enough. Spellskite can protect, you know... Spellskite. Whatever, or, uh, it's unlikely, but... Uh, you know, so, Blake still Colossus gets the job just, done. Yeah. Bob's time twister seemed better for Kai than it was for Bob. Yep, for sure. Uh, Bob's hand was fine, and he had Force of Will, but he just he had all the mana, but none of it fast. So, playing one land a turn, to get the Tezzeret out, despite opening on land Mox Mox, he wasn't actually able to cast Tezzeret before. He was just, you know, dead. Yeah, the draw sevens can be tricky in a deck full with a lot of permission, right? If you've got forces and missteps, sometimes you just draw seven yourself into a hand of nothing. Like, at least a hand that doesn't do anything proactive. Right. I think that game plays out super different if Kai didn't draw Force of Will that turn. Because he's more likely to, like, Demonic Tutor for something like Ancestral. He could That's go for correct. Tinker, but he, he's in the face of four cards. So it's a tough spot to just uh, just go for Tinker. But, uh, you know, entirely possible. He still does it and just wins. Fair enough. Hey, I didn't get to hear your re response to the uh, Holiday Vintage Festival. Did you get a chance to, to see that, or were you too busy getting ready to play Luis? Sorry? Yeah, I, I haven't checked it out yet. I'm not sure exactly what that is yet. All right, so, well, I, I can tell you. I can tell the people who are just tuning in, too. Uh, Wizards asked us to announce, and we can go ahead down to the game. That's fine. Oh, uh, yeah, here's the bracket. Even better. Holiday v Vintage Festival Championship. So Wizards is putting on a tournament. Uh, it's on December 20th, which is a Saturday. A Saturday with no Grand Prix, too. Uh Fully seven sets of Vintage Masters at stake here. There's, or sorry, eight sets. There's five sets for the top four players, including both a foil and a regular set if you win the thing. You also can get a set of Vintage Masters for just being amongst the top three finishers who don't have any power cards in your deck. So mm -hmm. Vintage Tournament, and you can see on the other slide, hopefully we have a chance to throw that up real quick. The way you qualify for this is either go into a Vintage Daily event and put up a 3-1, or play a Legacy Daily event and put up a 4-0. 
And that's, uh, so that starts December 10th. There's about a 10 day qualification window there. Sweet. Um, we have some idea of how many there are going to be. Like a uh, in terms now, of the daily events? What they're expecting? Yeah. Well, I don't think they're changing the daily event schedule. So there are more legacy dailies than there are vintages, but you have to go 4 in legacy. I don't know. I Not just know that uh, I'll be trying to qualify. Apparently, I should be playing my right. Charbelter deck or Danny Batterman's <laughs> Charbelter deck anyway. Yeah. Hey, either way, you're going to have a lot of time for lunch each round. <laughs> That is true. That deck does not have many second or third turns. When I get some second turns. I mean, yeah. when you get a third turn, though, things have definitely gone well off the script. Yeah. Uh, yeah the I second, don't the whole list, but... The second turns are usually of the, oh, I didn't have three mana to activate the Charbelter I put into play variety. Sure. I, I think I put that into our virtual turn ones, like, oh, I played Time Vault. Yeah, sure. Like, oh, I played Charbelter and I have three mana. You are dead. <laughs> Unless you can go Black Lotus Hercules Recall me. Or I guess Mox Hercules Recall. Wow. Bob led with a divining top, baiting the mental misstep so that he could resolve his soul ring and then the time vault. Is that a is that a reshape in his hand? That is a Oh, it's a thirst for knowledge, my bad. Oh yeah. Thirst for knowledge. So all Bob needs to do is come up with a Voltaic key and he wins, obviously. He's got Got some search. Leads with... More bait spells for the noon stuff. <laughs> sure. That's Kai it. kept a one-lander. So Bob Thon's right there, just looking for his own missed up. Blight steals an easy discard. It is. But now what? Well, you're not going to fight missteps, or, I'm sorry, misstep resolves is what I meant to say. Yeah, just let it resolve. Kai really needs a second land. The interesting thing happens if Kai doesn't draw a second land and just passes, whether Bob untaps his time vault. Yes. It's not, it's not ridiculous. No, he could totally untap time vault here. He has forced world back up, so. I think he's more interested in, yeah, brainstorming and seeing what he can find. Jeez. Yogmos will and an academy. I guess he doesn't have... He needs a turn. He can get black mana off the Scalding Tarn for the Yawgmoth's Will. So maybe he sets up for next turn? He really wants all these cards, though, because he wants the Force to Blue card, he wants the black mana, he wants the Will, he wants the Artifact, he wants the Academy. Like, yeah, well, the Pearl is the weird is. spot where you just actually want everything. So I think he just puts back the Tarn, he's Academy, and leaves up Hardcast Force of Will. I think. And, it's, and doesn't, he doesn't have to crack his fetch land. Yeah, he's not even... Yeah, no, I, I think he puts fetch land cracks. back at the top. Not sure what's going on with our screen, but we'll get that out of your way. We lost Bob's hand. That's what's going on. We'll get Bob's hand back. We get Bob's face instead of his hand. Hilarious. We lost the screen share. That's what's going on. Bob, hold your hand up to the camera. <laughs> All right. Does he go for it here? The Ogmos will. Kind of no reason to. He's in such a commanding position. Looks like he's going to, though. Just the full value, Yawgmoth's full of a bunch of card draw spells. That's what's in his graveyard, right? Basically. Souls of Thirst in there, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I think I... Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I think I wait a turn to at least also get the land drop and... Uh, yeah, and I can't draw a second land. <laughs> oh, Black oh, Lotus. Okay. Of course. It's a good one. get the Time Vault untapped now. <laughs> yeah. It is a good spot. Yeah, you just Yawgmoth Will. There's a ton of value in there. Thirst, a Ponder, a Land Drop. <laughs> is this going to resolve, though? Kai actually has... Uh, oh, can you counter twice? Bob forces. Kai cast. can misdirect one. Can misdirect Bob's force of will onto the Ogmos will. Sure. I mean, he has to pitch time ball, but you do what you got to do. I mean, he has another force of will in hand, but we can't that we know from earlier. But I don't know if he has another blue card. 
So Bob just hard cast this force of will using his mana off Academy and Soul Ring, but yeah, the Yagmas will is not going to resolve. Wow. Game on. Time Vault. <laughs> yeah, Bob's going to take his Time Vault turn. Now, I mean, Bob lost the Yagmas will in only one of his force of wills, while Kai had to lose two counters and two cards he had to discard, so it sure. was a four for two. Not, not the best Yagmas will in the world, obviously, he usually just wins the game, but it's, it's not like it was awful. So is he down to just that Force of Will? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think I think we've got his hand back now. So he wants to take the Time Vault turn here to, so he can untap Academy and have the ability to hard cast that Force of Will. That makes sense. Oh, Thought Seize isn't bad either. Still has hard cast available. Now what do you take here? You take the DT? I think so. Just leave him with a couple of young Pyros. Interesting. Well, Kai has gotten it to be more or less a stalemate now, and he's finally got a second land. It's a Delta that can go get a Tropical, and the Young Pyromancer Brigade can begin. Do you counter the first one if you're Bob? It's close. I, I'm not sure his entire list and how many cards he has to draw that you know he's going to want to protect. Clearly, if he just draws like Tezzeret or Voltaic Key or on the spot. But he also Nothing. knows Kai's hand is just a second young pyromancer, so I like that force there. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems very likely that it's going to be exactly what you want to do. I don't know if there's other cards he has that are not Time Vault related that he's going to want some Oof. kind of protection to set up. It seems unlikely, though. This young pyromancer does resolve. There's all oh. And that'll do it. Good we game. wanted game three, uh, right? Of course. We'll take we'll it off the top. TGO wins. We are off to game three. That's like the uh, the VSL motto. Quote, unquote, more magic. <laughs> Let's get I one like more that. game. Man. More magic. That works. We're always ready for one more game. Let's just go to a game three. Yeah, let's do one more scrimmage. <laughs> more vintage. More magic. You going to the Grand Prix this weekend? I am. You are? Is it yeah, just I, all Delvers all the time? And It's legacy for Grand Prix New Jersey, if you guys don't know what we're talking about. But it's going to yeah. be 3,000, 4,000 people there, something crazy? I'll take the over. Um, You'll take the over on 4,000? Yeah. Jeez. I think so. Okay. I mean, I, I could clearly be wrong on this one, but I, I definitely take the over. Wow. Uh, I, think, I think it might sail over, but... Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a big tournament. Um, all gonna, Delvers all the time, or you got some tech up your sleeve? Oh, I I don't think I'm gonna play Delver. I've got I've got a a brew I'm working on that you know it's gonna maybe do something a little bit different. So nice. yeah, I mean I I was not planning on going. Uh, I was not going as of the team GP. Okay. And by the time we finished, we were able to roll off a bunch of wins in a row. You know, we started three and two won eight of the last nine to pick up those three pro points, and they just changed the pro point system. Helene yep. announced a couple days before that GP. So if I'm able to go 12 and three in New Jersey, you get you get another three points, which is yep. a lot more incentive to go because making top eight in a tournament of that size is not reasonable. I mean, great if it happens, but it's... Uh, it's an incredible. You can't challenge. count on top eight. If if the only weight reason to go is to make top eight, then right. the odds aren't in your favor. It, it is very hard. Three to, is totally reasonable. Yeah, it is very hard to, uh, you know, convince someone to go play a tournament where you need top eight to have meaningful pro points when there's going to be four, five thousand people. It's it's not. It's just not likely. I mean, you, the kind of record you need is in the fourteen to one, fourteen and one range. And so if you can't pick up three points and you're basically trying to get one or two points, which likely is not going to help you with a GP cap, it, it's, it's hard to justify traveling cross-country. That's, that's basically that totally makes sense. Yeah, I think they know they, act, they just messed up the pro points right around the top 16. They did fine with all the changes they made to the pro points this season. I think with the exception of near misses of top eight at GPs, basically the, exactly the 12 and three markets was wrong. So they fixed it. I mean, hats off to them for seeing a problem and fixing it. I'm not convinced that it's fully fixed, but uh, it's definitely a step in the right direction. Okay. 
It would, um, it would be nicer if they had a few more opportunities to actually get two points, which just eventually just vanished. Like yeah. Game three and the one stayed one. And you're like, but I know that they, they removed so many of the incentives to intentional draw. I think they were really afraid to put one back in that people might intentionally draw into two points rather than playing in the I last. Mean, my, my contention is that the, like making the one point record into two points isn't really going to change things because for most people it won't impact them. Um, for these large GPs are the ones where tons of people are going to get the two points, but most of these people are going to finish the season with two points. Yeah. It's not, it's not a meaningful difference. It's one extra point. So there will be a lot more points given away, but it's only going to affect the people who are generally chasing things like silver, and it will probably only make that impact for one to two right. people. Well, let's know. see what's going on in this match here. Bob, once again, has a bunch of artifact mana and a turn one time vault. And yep. once again, he's got this Tezzeret where if he can build up the five mana, he can go get, and really has to build to six if he's going to, uh, oh no, Tezzeret itself can untap the time vault. Five mana is plenty. Doesn't need to get the Voltaic key. Tezzeret itself can function as the Voltaic key. So he is threatening to win the game next turn. Kai's hand has got quite a bit of disruption. Of course, tapping red mana is going to make it a little less likely, but. Well, he, he needed the second blue for Jace. I mean, I think it's. Right. It is unfortunate for Kai that he had to take down his Pyroblast shield, barring some uh, Mox Ruby off the top action, which he's not going to get. Yeah, if Kai it, gets to untap, he's in pretty good shape, but is he going to get to untap? It's an interesting judgment call of choosing to tap that mana immediately when there's a reason why your opponent played, you know, Mana Crypt and two <laughs> different stuff. They're clearly going for it, right? Like, So, uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's purely judgment call there. All right, let's see what Bob can come up with. Of course, he Bob does, does get untap, not. Like he said, it's game over. Okay, win. so he did not come up with permission, but he can play both Thirst and Walk here, right? Yeah, yeah so he's going to lead with the Time Walk. Kai might be tempted to Pyroblast that if Red Mana was up, but it's not. Yeah. Now it's Maybe. Thirst Knowledge. He's seen quite a few bait spells in uh, various matches he's played already, just by <laughs> not being around for very long. So uh... Thirst does not basically come up with anything. Nope. Thirst looks like it whiffed. He discards two lands rather than the Sapphire. Yeah. So Bob is... You still go for this Tezzeret, right? Bob gets a time walk turn now. He gets to untap. Oz. Misstep. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, think you go for it. Your opponent's got Jason play. They're yeah, I guess, you, I guess you just have to. I mean, we know it's not going to work. But you can't, you can't pass the turn with Jason play, of course. Yeah, you're right. So Bob says, have you got a force of will? Because I win the game if you don't. Kai says, of course I have a force of will. Do you know who I am? You asked him the same question. He said I didn't have a force of will. I guess you knew who he Not was. the first but... one. <laughs> you killed him on turn one pretty easily. That was fun. Now Kai gets to resolve this, uh, run this ancestral into the misstep. I assume he'll defend it with the pyroblast. Does seem likely. Although, if he doesn't, he just gets to play Ingot Chewer, and he's not really <laughs> at risk of really losing to anything, which is probably yeah. better. I mean, he gets to Jace first, see what he see what he sees. Yeah, he chose not to Pyroblast that misstep. And he can just hard cast this Ingot Chewer if he wants, or he can just leave up Pyroblast and Ingot Chewer with a well, whatever that's called that <laughs> where it just dies. Evoke. evoke is that what it is? Yeah, evoke. Okay. Is he really hard cast Ingot Chewer is pretty hilarious here. I mean, if he blows up the time vault, I think he evokes and leaves up Pyroblast just because he can. He has Jason play. Yeah, I guess that it's just less fun than attacking with Ingot Chewer. Of course, if you didn't have Jason play and needed the the kill condition to make sure he's racing his own mana crypt, I sure. mean, of course Bob has his mana crypt too. So, but with Jason play, they, there's no reason to risk it and just have Bob just cast Tezzeret and you randomly lose to it. I know. I just wanted to see Ingot Chewer for the win. Well, you're not out of the woods yet. I mean, there's still Jason playing. <laughs> so you can hard cast one next turn. The question is whether he kills the ruby or kills his own mana crypt. If that happens. Still willing to pay life for Jace? Yes, still willing to pay life. I mean, for Probe. 
How does Bob ever win this game? I'm trying to think. Tinker doesn't do much in the face of a Jace. No. There's a DT over there now, too. Time for Kai to just go get a Tinker. Uh, that is reasonable. I can't really see his graveyard well to know whether something like Yuck Muscle is great. Get the tutor. He's got the walk. He doesn't have a ton of mana, though. He hasn't seen the Lotus yet. Sure. I think you just get Tinker here. I don't know. Maybe that's greedy. I mean, he just saw gets five, Tinker. Eight. It gets rid of Mana Crypt, which is great. And if it doesn't work, he still has Jason play. Well, the echoing truth. He's seen the echoing truth, though, so yeah, he, he knows Bob's hand. He just saw Bob's hand with. Oh, the he just broke. Oh. He saw he get a taxi and probe result, so okay. he knows about echoing truth. And I think we saw that Kai has a Colossus, right? So Tinker does not work through echoing truth. He just goes on Pyro. Well, he has the Pyroblast for an echoing truth, but not for whatever Bob may draw in his draw. Right. Wouldn't have been able to tinker that turn, also. He only had three mana left, so Young Pyro let him leave up Pyro Blast. Anyway, sitting on this Jace sure seems like it's going to get there. Now he's got a second Young Pyromancer. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the league, Kai Buddha. Doesn't want the Young Pyromancer? Evidently not. I can do better. Yeah, just having Jace sit and play, uh, we've learned in all formats, is a, is a great spot to be in. Yeah, I think Kai didn't want Young Pyromancer because it's not a blue card to pitch to Force of Will. Makes sense. And he's in some mild danger of losing Mana Crypt flips faster than he can attack, but not much danger. Well, now he can cast the Young Pyromancer. Yeah. It's a lot of Pyroblasts. It's almost like he's been watching all season. <laughs> no, he would never do that. <laughs> he would have been in season one if it wasn't for the time zones. He is a decent player. He's, I mean, he's done okay for like <laughs> as, for a career. Like, you only get three letters apparently to be at the top of the magic: John, Kai, LSV, Bob, Gabe. I, think, I, know, I like how you've gotten people to start calling you Fro. Is that your plan? To try to get into that <laughs> upper... You only get three letters to get into the true pantheon, I think. I mean, I, I've never tried to uh, get someone <laughs> to call me that, nor do I consider myself anywhere near the level of a Kai or a John or an LSV. So, sure. Uh, Someday, maybe. I, I wouldn't mind to uh, be considered one day in the second or third or fourth tier of those guys. <laughs> I don't. Need, I don't need to be in that upper echelon. Like the things that they have done, mo for most of them are, are just not going to be matched. It's just not realistic in this day and age. And uh, with the, with the way that technology is present and deckless spread, and people have so much time to prepare for tournaments with Magic Online and with test groups and all these things, it's just the edge that you need to get to be on the level of like where Kai and John were. Which I mean. Yep. Obviously, they were the best players of all time, but also in a time where people weren't able to do as much to catch up to them. So their dominance was felt tenfold, basically. So it's, it's not going to happen again, and that's okay. It's nice to be in, a, in a, a world where we can have fantasy pro tours where Kai's not banned. We can have you know, <laughs> really had a top you eight instead of a top him. seven because of John. Like That's fine. I'm okay with that. And Pyromancer keeps chipping over. Kai has the hand full of permission, ready to stop whatever Bob can come up with. Mana Crypt says safe. Another turn. Bob's just drawing more. Draw another jewelry. All right. Looking like Kai's going to split his two scrimmages. So who do we got lined up third? I don't have a third match lined up. You know, see if he's actually worthy. Should, should I, you <laughs> should have the rapid waiting third. Just, I've thought see. about the play in tournament. The play in tournament would be pretty intense magic. Was it going to make Kai play his way into the league, though? No, of course not. He's already played his way into our hearts. Yeah, fair. 
I'm a very big Kai fan. I got to spend a lot of time with Kai back when we played more than a decade ago, and uh, he is one of my favorite people, despite, and also, of course, being one of the best players of all time. R really great guy, and a uh, very big fan. I've been told he's a good cook, too. I have also heard that. I have not experienced that. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind a, an LSV Kai cook-off. Should, uh, well, that would should be they awesome. both make the finals next year? Should we Tiebreaker? Is he going to die to Mana Crypt? There's the game. A cook -off Mana Crypt for the win. That's what, I, that's what I propose right now. Anyone, <laughs> anyone oppose? Should they meet in the finals? A cook-off de determines the die roll. That's pretty good. And then we all win because we get to eat it. That's true. All right. Kai takes two out of three from Bob Maher. Pretty interesting magic. That was a fun, fun week. So we've got a new 10th player for next year. Kai Bude will be replacing Josh Utter Layton. We've got Wizards doing what they can to help support Vintage on Magic Online, offering up a pretty awesome tournament in December. And, I mean, it sounds like, you know, they've got this Vintage Festival idea that they can just focus a lot of attention on Vintage and uh, help sort of get more people into the format, have some cool reasons to play the format. There's supposed to be an article going up on, on the, the Mothership, the main website, uh, Daily MTG, tomorrow, actually, with more details. So we got that announcement, and we got a semifinal. Luis Scott Vargas took down his good buddy Eric in, uh, in some pretty interesting games. The, yeah. the draws were not as good for you this week. As, <laughs> at least said, not as LSP. My draws were better this week than last week. No, that's but a good point. As it's crazy good point. as it's Luis's sounds, draws, so, though. I got annihilated. Were, but. Luis's draws were way better than his draws last yeah, week. Yeah, so, you know, he's like, I hope, I hope I can draw that well last week. I'm like, or next week, <laughs> he's saying, I'm like, just draw half as well and just win very easily. He's like, do you really think I need to draw half as well to win? I'm like, no, I said to win easily. Oh, so, <laughs> so we yeah. got one match left when it comes to Vintage Super League Season 1. The, the finals will be next week. It is best three out of five matches. So we've got fully, could be five matches of Luis and uh, and Steve going at it. Uh, Delver I'd be versus... not to see a lot of matches. I, I don't think this one's going to... I'd be surprised to not see a lot of matches. I, I think this one's going to be close. Yeah. yeah, I think it should go at least four and quite possibly five, so... Come back next week, same time. We'll be here, 7 o'clock. Uh, we'll have one match left, and then uh, we are going to essentially take off just the month of December between the World Championships and the holidays. We're looking at uh, Season 2 in January. So one more matchup. Come back next week. We'll find out who is going to be your Season 1 champion. Just I'll be here. Thing. Um, I, I've heard a lot of people questioning whether it was a good time to get into Vintage, where whether it was... You know, you hear that a lot. And hearing this announcement, seeing the Vintage Super League, um, seeing the response that I get from people that I know that you're getting from people all over, supporting Vintage, supporting Vintage Super League, getting it from Watsi, getting it from Magic Online, it, now is as good a time as ever to get involved in Vintage. If you're on the fence, there's a lot of great things going on. should really look into it. Um, no, I agree. League. That's really well said. And in fact, the Vintage Masters comes back uh, tomorrow, right? We've got the... Yeah. The that's, new that's, Legacy Cube that I, that I helped work on in, and the flashback format that it's paired with is Vintage Masters. So yeah. whether you're preparing for Worlds or more likely just thinking about acquiring some Vintage cards, I'm sure those cues are going to be firing too. Yeah, strongly suggest it. Great format. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's worth it. I agree. I will see you guys in the cues if I <laughs> before I see you next week, I think. All right. See you guys next time.